Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Baroness Susan Greenfield. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming on our programme today. That's my pleasure. Are you a packed session. I've seen people streaming mm -hmm. out. Well, it was a huge hall. It was a huge hall. <laughs> what were you talking was about? It? What was your... Um, well, I'm a neuroscientist and I was exploring the idea that technology might be changing the brain um, in an unprecedented way. And what I was trying to introduce people to was this concept of what I call mind change saying that it's very similar in many ways to climate change. Climate change is unprecedented, it's global, it's controversial, and above all, it unpacks into multifaceted issues. And what we explored was all the different questions that we could ask about how technology could be changing the way everyone, but particularly young people, are thinking and feeling. How is technology changing the way young people are uh, thinking and feeling? Well, let's unpack it into some of the broad activities. Um, for example, we can think about social networking sites and the change that has on interpersonal relationships, on empathy, and perhaps most important of all, on people's individual identity, how they see themselves. If identity is constructed externally by others and you're painting an idealised view of yourself, then might that change current views of identity? Then we talked about surfing and differentiating information from knowledge and how people use information and how information might be converted into wisdom, into understanding and perhaps even into creativity. Then we talked about gaming and addiction and aggression um, and short attention spans and how that might be linked to the rise and rise of the video game culture. So lots of different questions and obviously we only touched on the surface but it's to promote debate, it's not as if there's a simple answer, it's to promote debate and discussion about where we want to go. It's interesting though, you said uh, looking at these for both a force for, force for good, potentially. I mean, when these topics are discussed in the media, they're all discussed as terrible things, the effect it's having on... So how, how can well, these be a force for good? Well, that reminds me, uh, I don't know if you said, um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe, where they said the fastest fuel there is, not the fastest fuel there is, bad news. Because nothing travels faster than bad news, and dare I say it, the media like promoting bad news because that travels so fast and people love it. Yeah. Um, now, of course, it's easy also to demonize something or to simplify something. And I'm trying to combat that tendency because it's not as if it's all good or all bad, but it is something that is an issue and it's something we need to talk about. But the big problem is it does demand that we have an idea of the kind of values that we want, the kind of people we want our kids to be, the kind of society we want. And that's something We've never had the luxury before of thinking through, before we've had society and culture and happenstance thrust upon us. Like my mum dodged bombs in the Blitz in London, you know, she had no choice. Now we do have a choice and I think this is hard for people because it's quite new and we don't have a precedent. There's no route map onto what would be an ideal society. It's, it's a hard question but a very exciting one. I've been looking forward to this interview because I have two daughters, 16 and uh, 14. For everybody who looks after younger people, what should they be looking out for? Well, my own view is the worst thing you can do is to police people and say you mustn't do this and you mustn't do that. As an ex-smoker, I know how egregious it is to have someone keep saying to you what you mustn't do. What's more exciting is to create something that outcompetes whatever it is you feel might be an issue. And this is a hard thing. It's not so much to look out, but it's how can you create for your daughters an exciting and fulfilling environment that brings out the best in them. How can you help them be creative? Not how can they have the latest designer trainers to define their identity, but how can they define themselves by some new exciting idea that no one else has ever had, whether it's just rearranging the kitchen. Doesn't, they don't have to write symphonies or anything. You know? it's, it's suddenly having, giving people the confidence to be individual and to promote themselves as individuals and to respect individuality in others. And I think if instead of following the herd and seeking mass approval from your 500 Facebook friends, you started to think, what am I good at? What am I bad at? How can I make the most of what I have? And how can I develop as a person? I think that's much more helpful for a parent to help a child do than just limit their time or police them on, on their Facebook sites. Well, thank you ever so much indeed for talking to us today. We Thank really you. appreciate thank it. You thank you very much. You. Thank you.